Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 14. So we're getting right to the end here guys, we're nearly done with this and although it may not look much right now, by the end of the next episode it will be fantastic. So this episode we are going to focus on adding some extra collectibles, so we're going to have some red gems and green gems. Uh, we'll look at creating more levels and we'll also look at linking and sequencing. So let's start with the gems. So we have these uh, four, all the silver ones or grey ones, whatever we want to call them. Uh, so I want to take this first one up here, silver gem, hold control, press D. And if I can find it in the scene, right there, I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to bring it over here. And let's have this as, uh, what should we have it? Should we have it as a red gem or a green gem? Let's have this as a green. So green gem. And then, obviously, what we're going to do is make it green rather than just grey or silver. So let's go to our materials. And uh, silver gem, we have that material. Did we ever apply that? I can't quite remember. Anyway, uh, let's hold control, press D to duplicate that. And let's obviously rename it to green gem. Change the colour. Simple as that. Let's have it about that green. Uh, let's apply it to the green gem. Um, I think it's going to be the actual gem itself. Is that what has the material on? It's the mesh, isn't it? That's it. So let's apply it to the mesh, change it to green, and let's change the point light also to green. There we go. And obviously that works in the exact same way as the silver ones. See it up there? So I want this to be, let's say, 500 points instead of 1,000 points. Because at the moment, with the silver gems, if we click on one and double click here on gem silver, if we open it up in Visual Studio, you can remember that the default value that we've set it to is 1,000 when we enter the actual trigger. So we'll make a separate one for the green. So hold control, press D on gem silver. And you'll get an error, don't worry about that. The reason being is the public class, but I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, so let's change that to gem green, and then open that in Visual Studio, and you get the error there, because it, here, the public class is still called gem silver. Now, I think I explained um, earlier in the series that the public class has to be the same as the file name itself. So in this case, we change that to gem green. And then all the little error markers go. So it should be perfectly like that. And let's change that to 500 and save the script. So because we've done that, we need to detach or remove the original script, which is the gem silver here. So we can right click on that component and remove component right there. And then we need to add gem green onto it like so. And then it's a case of scorebox, which is, uh, if I can remember, I think it's that there. So we drag and drop scorebox and collect sound is on the main camera and it's gem collect. So if we press play now, <clears throat> try this out. So you can see still got a thousand for the silver and 500 for the green. So now let's try uh, the red. Same principle applies here. So let's make the red worth, let's say, 250, maybe. So I'm going to hold control, press D on the green, move it up to about there. And yep, you've guessed it. Rename. So F2, red gem. And we change the material so we can hold control, press D on the green gem material, rename it to red gem and change it to red apply material to the mesh which is right there and let's change the point light to red as well looks a bit pink but it'll do you can take your time if you need to so last thing you need to do in the case of this red gem is pretty much what we do with a green one so if we go to our scripts and take gem green, hold troll, press D, duplicate. And yes, you'll get the error again, don't worry. And let's change it to, uh, sorry, it's 
gem red, isn't it? That's it. So let's open that up in Visual Studio and instantly change gem green to gem red. And let's change the score to 250. And let's save that right there. So yep, same again. Let's remove that component from red gem, which is the green one. So that needs to go. Red needs to be applied. Score box and gem collect. So now we have three varying uh, gems to collect. So let's collect them. There we go. So we've got 2,000, 2,500, 2,750. So if we finish the level, you'll be able to see the score adds up. There we go. Perfect. So on that note of it fading out, if you remember, we did a similar fade screen for when we fall off. So I think we actually have two fade screens. Now it is important to remember um, kind of the level of how far things are. So the order of what's on the canvas. But that doesn't matter too much at the moment. Um, generally with a game like this, which is relatively simple, it's not gonna matter too much. Anyway, this leads me on to uh, sequencing. So what I'm going to do is save that scene there. I'm quite happy with confirming that all as uh, level one. Now, there are different things to actually do with this. Um, and what I was going to do originally is create a level two, but next episode show you something called player preps. But how can I put it? I'm not entirely convinced that uh, that's the right order to do things, but uh, we'll still go with that. Um, but you know, you'll see how player prefs work anyway in the next episode. So for now, we will deal with creating new levels. So what I'm going to do is quite literally select this level, hold control, press D to duplicate, and it'll change it to level two. And if we open that, it will be the exact same level. However, what I'm going to do is just modify it a little more, just so as we can tell there is a difference in levels. So let's get rid of some of these silver gems. Let's just have two of them. Let's have a green gem down here. Reason I'm doing this, guys, is just show a bit of variation. That's all. There's nothing special to this. And let's have uh, no platform, but let's have this there. And maybe a couple of blocks, uh, just maybe surrounding, maybe. So if I take this one, Bring it out to about there. Maybe just make it a bit of a thin walkway. So you don't literally have to do the exact same thing I'm doing here. I'm just merely doing this to create visually a different looking level. So if I take this, bring it out to there and let me find my materials. Let me just apply some different colored materials here, there and everywhere. Oops, not the gem. <laughs> We want the floor, don't we? So yeah, you, you can see what's going on here. So this now looks like a different level yet again. And maybe we should move the starting point of Unity Chan as well. So let's just bring uh, over into the middle. And we'll consider this the second level. So hold control, press S to save. Now, file, build settings, and add open scenes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... At this point, we've got level one defined as scene three and level two defined as scene five. So what that means is that we have to go back to level one. And if we do, you can see there we are. It has changed the level. Just make sure when you're doing that second level after duplicating it, make sure you are in level zero two there, just so you don't make any silly changes. So back in level one, we have the load level script. Now, each level is going to have a different load script. And what we need to modify within level 001 is changing the redirect level and also adding a variable in the redirect level. So make sure we have level 001 uh, open and also redirect to level we need to go into there. So in redirect to level, let's go public static int next level semicolon and let's save that script now we don't need to do anything more we just need a place to store the variable of next level so what that means is in level 001 
when we start the game, we're changing the current level, which is redirect to level 3, which is level 1. At the same time, we need to go uh, redirect to level to level dot next level equals 5, semicolon, and save. So what that does is that makes the, it, it makes it realize the next level is this one here. So when we complete it, we go to here. So on the flip side of that, on the finish game trigger, we need to open up finish level. Because we don't want to duplicate this script more than we have to, we're going to keep this one static. We're going to keep it consistent. So finish level in there. After we've calculated our score, uh, we've set the fade screen as active. So we'll copy that line there to wait for two seconds. Then after two seconds, we will send ourselves to redirect level. So remember at this point, uh, everything we're doing, we're sending ourselves uh, to the next level or redirect level. When we restart, we're redirecting. When we finish, we're sending direct to the level. So because we're gonna do that, we need to add to the namespace in finish level, the scene management. So using Unity, engine dot scene management semicolon so that then means that we can go scene manager dot load level and in brackets we then put redirect to level dot next level and then close bracket semicolon and save so that is basically sending us uh, sorry that should be load scene not load level load scene redirect to level next level and save so it already knows the next level because when we start this level it tells that script what the next level is going to be so hopefully we shouldn't really have too much of a problem now if we start level one finish it we should be taken to level two but before we do that what we're going to need to do is actually go to level scripts hold control press d to duplicate and again you'll get that error so we just need to go into it and change level 001 to level 002 and because this is level uh, or rather scene number five we're going to change this to five because this is this level so the next level is going to be six so let's save that scene. I'm not going to create a third level in this, but that's the principle of what you would do. You would create your new level, and then you would go to File, Build Settings, and add it there. So level three would be six. So then it realizes, oh, level six is next. So let's make sure everything is saved. And let's go to Assets and Level 001. And let's give this a playthrough. Oh, and Unity Chan isn't jumping as she should do here. Uh, oh. I'll tell you what, guys, I uh, I need to practice a little more. Okay, so let's get onto the platform. Finish the level. Perfect. So now we should be taken to level two. Excellent. And there's level two. So now, because of the way we've set this up, we're going to end up in, well, so if we die, just to prove a point, if we die, we should go back to level two, or level one in this case. So, why have we gone to level two, uh, level one there, sorry. Let's check our death script. I didn't anticipate that would happen, but let's have a look. So, death object, level death. Uh, yes, it's because we have load scene default there as two. So... Once we die, what we need to do is change it to be um, redirect to level dot redirect to level and save. So what that means is when we die, we actually take this variable here, which when we start level two will be uh, number five. So it will take us to the correct scene. So let's play test this again to make sure that this is correct and we've not made a mistake so still doing good 
And we finish the level. Excellent. And it takes us to level two. And we die. And it's taken us to... Oh, huh, guys. I'm not sure why that happened. Let's have a quick look at level two. So death object in level two. Let's take a look, make sure we're doing this right. Um, oh, of course, sorry. I've just realized, guys, load level scripts. We have level one still on there. This is the joys of playtesting and debugging. This kind of thing happens more than you would think. So level scripts, level two, goes on to load level script. And fade in is, of course, if we can find it, <laughs> canvas, uh, fade in right there. So I'm going to start level two because we know that process works. So hopefully we should be able to fall off and we're on level two. <clears throat> there we go. So one thing I've noticed here is the score still remains the same. So we're going to work on that little bug now to change our score back to zero. So to do that, what we need to do is go on global score and we need to reset the score at any given interval. So it's current score. So that means our death uh, script, which is, if I can find it again. Uh, oh gosh, I have quite a few open here, don't I? Um, level death. So if we go into there, when it says you fell off, just before we load to the scene, what we need to do is global score dot current score equals zero save and then copy that exact same line of code and finish level just before we go to the next one paste that same line again so that means that we won't carry the score over to the next level however we will be uh, looking at saving that score in the next episode so hopefully the whole sequence will work now so i want to give this sequence a quick run through while I explain what we're going to do in the next episode. So let's try out level one and give this a go. So guys, next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to look at player preps and player preps are a way of saving information. Uh, we'll also look at settings, uh, some extra bits here and there, and we'll build the final product. And I'll give a few final words on the game itself. Uh, so yeah, next episode will be the last episode of this series because at that point I'll have taught you everything you need to know and you can carry on from there. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.